Hi, my name is Mike Burke. I'm here to take you through this 82 Viking. I've sold and built a lot of Vikings in my time, and this 82 is really a special one with her open bridge and big tower. She's very sexy and agile and a great boat to fish on. We're kicking off today's tour here in the Master, which is one of five staterooms. In addition to the Master, we have a cruise quarters forward with over and under bunks. We also have three guest rooms, including a side-by-side, -side, a queen, and a VIP, all with ensuite heads. This 82 Viking is equipped with 2400 horsepower MTUs. She has 1750 hours and has only burned 50,000 gallons of fuel. She's lightly used and ready to go. This 82 Viking is an open bridge with a big Palm Beach tower on it. The feel and the open airiness of this boat is unbelievable. Lots of seating, lots of refrigeration, all upstairs. I'm going to hand you over to Ryan now. He's going to walk you through the boat, and I look forward to checking in with you at the end of the tour. If you pay close attention, this 82 differs in a lot of really great ways from other Vikings on the water. The differences are subtle, but all combine for an unmistakable profile and make for a diverse guest experience. Some areas on board, however, have been perfected over decades and share the design elements of their predecessors. The first of such areas is the split-level cockpit found at the stern of the vessel. Divided into two areas, the combination of her elevated observation mezzanine and the tournament-ready cockpit make for a perfect entertaining venue. The fishing area is the first feature that we're going to take a look at back here. The angler's experience all revolves around the centerline fighting chair. It's surrounded by teak on all sides, and the chair swings out of the way to reveal a substantial lazarette. Also seen underfoot in the cockpit are split hatch fish boxes to port and starboard. These are quickly filled with ice and your fresh catch that you bring on board through the tuna door in the starboard side of the transom. After you pull in your fish and when you're ready to get your lines back in the water, you can hook up with fresh bait out of the live well. When it comes time to clean up back here while you're headed to the dock, you have easy access to these lockers on the sides where you can trade your rod and gaff for a brush and a hose. When it comes to those evening cruises on the intercoastal or in calm water, the setup couldn't be more perfect. The fishing area becomes an open air venue to break off into side conversations, and the seating area located up on the mezzanine takes on a whole new life. A wide bench seat is just under a molded brow on the port side. The starboard corner also has seating that rests above the tackle storage cabinet. In addition to being an ideal area for entertaining, the layout offers the added bonus of copious storage under the mezzanine step. The teak lids are lift assisted and the amount of cold storage that these offer are perfect for filling up with drinks. One of my personal favorite things about being on a sport fish is the perspective of the stern. There really isn't another boat design that's both this powerful and gets you so close to the waterline. Back here at top speed is a feeling that no other boat design can really compete with. All of that power that you experience underway is generated in the engine room that can be accessed centerline in the mezzanine step. To each side of the mechanical space are the yacht's twin MTU engines that each put out 2400 horsepower per side. Setting you up for success away from the dock, you'll also see a pair of Cummins Onan generators that are located aft of each engine. Two other key components in here are an AC shore power converter system that allows you to plug into any dock in the world, and there's also a water maker. To me, the most stunning aspect of this 82 is her hull color. You can barely see it towards the stern when you're up at speed, but by the time the hull color reaches all of the way forward, it pronounces the most notable feature on any of these oversized Vikings, the bow. 
The size of this boat and the power behind it need a very particular angle of entry when you're out on the sea. The way that Viking pulls this off has become one of the builder's most recognizable strengths. Something I like specifically about Nina Marie is the simple joint where the hull meets the cap over the bow. To me, it's the simplicity of not having a teak cap rail that makes for the perfect pairing between the competition-ready bow and the towering semi-enclosed flybridge up above. When you take into account how much this design favors a fishing setup, the design overall and deceptive size of this 82 makes complete sense. Up here, you have the same footprint you would as if you had a sky bridge, but this particular flybridge is far more practical and inviting. Forward up here is a guest seating area. The more formal seating can be seen centerline, where there's a molded-in dinette. These are some of the best seats in the house when you're underway. The seating that flanks this are the trademark Viking bench seats, where you can put your feet up and stay connected with the captain. Also found around the seating is a ton of temperature-controlled storage that's seen in three easily accessed cold boxes. Rounding out this area, we see a sink that's in the port forward corner. Because of the open nature of Nina Marie's design, you only need two helms, and Viking made the most of this lower primary station. Four monitors read off the majority of your critical controls, as well as your chart plotter and depth sounder data. The information coming from your engines can be seen just below on the engine monitors. These are just an arm's reach away from the Teak Helm Pod with Palm Beach controls. In addition to the fact that the bow thruster is integrated into the throttle handles, there's also a secondary bow thruster control in the port side control box. There's a matching lid and storage area that mirrors this one over to starboard. Together, these are designed to protect instruments like your radar controls, VHF radio, and navigation switches. More concealed electronics can be seen in the drop box overhead. Up here, the primary tool is a Garmin GPS map flanked by a data display and SIMRAD control. The yacht's second helm is located at the top of a domineering tuna tower. The equipment found up here gives you full control over the boat and includes a Furuno Navnet radar control right next to the stainless wheel. On the starboard side are her MTU engine controls and a bow thruster joystick. Now that I've shown you all of the exterior spaces on board, let's change gears and take a look at the interior where this boat makes a sharp turn from fishing machine to luxury cruiser. I mentioned earlier that the size of this 82 is deceiving, and stepping inside Nina Marie's full beam salon is a reminder of just how big this boat is. For all of this Viking simplicity, the interior is highly upgraded, especially in terms of the woodwork and finishes. This means that you'll find satin finished cabinet faces instead of the standard high gloss, as well as bird's eye maple tabletops. The main seating area is located in the aft portion of the salon, where there's a large L-shaped settee that can accommodate around five guests. As you might expect, there's a ton of storage beneath this couch for rods, reels, and tackle. Looking right by the entrance, we see a convenient day head. Both the day head and the rest of the salon are flooded by natural light thanks to windows that surround the entire area. Jumping to the port forward end of the salon is where we see the formal dining area with seating for up to eight on all sides when the boat is full and you're having family style meals. Adjacent to the dinette is this 82's galley. The centerpiece here is an oversized island that serves as your main prep space because of durable granite countertops. There's seating for three along the aft, while the front side offers you six cold drawers with plenty of refrigeration. As for the appliances found in the galley, your cooking takes place at a four burner glass cooktop with a microwave convection oven 
that hides away in the overhead cabinets. When it comes time to clean up, this area includes a two basin stainless sink, a drawer style dishwasher, and a trash compactor. In addition to the cabinet storage, there are also two massive areas for putting provisions and supplies, the first of which is the doghouse located forward of the galley. Just outside of this is yet another great storage option, and beyond, opposite to port, is the AV control room, another great location for storing things like cushions. Wrapping up here on the main deck, we're going to follow Mike downstairs as he makes his way into the master stateroom. Spanning the full beam of the yacht, the owner's accommodation lives up to Viking's reputation of having a world-class and luxurious design. Everything in this space is a reminder of the 82's volume as seen by the open space surrounding a centerline king berth. On the forward bulkhead, we see this cabin's TV, which is mounted above drawer storage. Over to port is one of two double door hanging lockers that's just feet away from a desk below a hole window. This is a calming area in the event that work comes up and also doubles as a vanity. Over on the starboard side is an L-shaped seating area in the aft. Immediately forward of this built-in seating, we see a mirrored version of the storage we saw to port. Like the rest of the stateroom itself, the master ensuite is replete with space and high-end finishes. Leaving the master and heading up a few steps brings us to the next cabin with a bunk arrangement. This serves primarily as the crew cabin with two main storage solutions. One of these is a hanging locker that's right by the entrance, and the other is a floor to ceiling closet. Along with all of this storage, the cabin also has a TV and a private ensuite head with a shower stall. Looking aft from this cabin down the companionway, we can see the yacht's laundry center with full-sized separate washer and dryer units. The three remaining staterooms can be found further forward in the lower companionway, starting on the starboard side. This cabin has a layout that features side-by-side -side berths and the same great storage as the last cabin, as well as a TV on the forward bulkhead. What separates this guest accommodation from the others is the red wall covering that gives this room a tactile feel. Like all of the guest accommodations, this cabin also has an ensuite. Moving across the hall to the port side, we enter the fourth of five guest cabins. The final stateroom is the bow VIP, which is located all of the way forward. And here we see a centerline island queen berth and overhead storage to both sides. Looking to the aft bulkhead, we see this cabin's TV, which is right next to a hanging locker. Also located in the immediate area is the entrance into the ensuite. Thanks for joining Ryan and I today aboard the Nina Marie, a 2010-82 Viking. Should you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. She's based out of Jupiter, Florida.